Hello, everyone. I'm Robert Cook, CTO and founder of 3Forge. We started 3Forge in, in New York in 2011 to build a transformative platform enabling your designers and developers to build applications at a fraction of time and cost with a focus on business critical scale, performance, and interoperability. It first went into production in 2014 with one of the world's largest tier one banks, and since then it has seen adoption across the street. In 2020, we opened an office in the UK, 2021 an office in Singapore, and all of that has been around providing 24-hour support. This year, 2022, has been a breakout year for 3Forge. We've already uh, seen a 100% uh, growth. In a moment, I'll be building a dashboard from scratch uh, in front of this live audience. But before that, I'd like to spend a few minutes demonstrating some of the data agnostic use cases we have. So first thing, uh, this is a dashboard that was custom built over the last few days. You can see the Finnovate logo up in the corner there, so we thought we'd throw that in. Uh, and so the engineers thought it would be fun to actually put just a, a, a table grid. So this is a standard three forged table grid on the left-hand side here. And it's linked to Twitter. So if anyone were to hashtag pound Finnovate, it will show up during this demo. So feel free to do that. I can see we got one here at 9. 34. Um, moving on, though, on the right-hand side here, I thought I would just again start with some other uh, uh, data agnostic use cases. So this one is connecting to Tesla cars. So we installed Raspberry Pis in a fleet of Tesla cars. We then were consuming hundreds of thousands of events from this fleet, and we could do real-time management of those vehicles so that we could look at that. That was a very cool use case. Another example is within the transportation industry. So uh, for, for an airline, we took all ticketed passengers across all flights around the world. We could capture where they were at any time so that you could have very quick feedback and understand what's going on um, with, with in your customer base. Another example, uh, Coinbase. Coinbase is kind enough to have an open API where you can connect to a live web stream, a web socket. So we've done that. And then we can provide a real time uh, depth of book so you can see that. Um, so those are a few examples. But now I want to move on to the fun stuff. I'm going to go ahead and build a dashboard on the fly for you guys. So first off, all of this running in the web, but I'm going to go ahead and just go full screen mode here to give us maximum real estate. So up in the corner here, we've got this little toggle. When I click that toggle, it puts me into a mode where I can then control all the widgets. So for example, I can control that Twitter widget if I want. In this case, I'm going to actually create a brand new uh, dashboard. So I'm, I'm creating a new window here. Do a little bit of real estate management. I'm going to go ahead and split this down the middle. On the right-hand side, I'm going to create a real-time table. Now, normally, you would attach your own feeds. In this particular case, I'm going to use two existing feeds. We have an international orders feed, and we have an, and we have an FX rate feed. We're bringing those in, and I want to basically combine those together. We call that a decorate uh, operation. So what I need to do is say I'm going to select my orders. On the left-hand side, I want to go ahead and use the currency. So I'm going to take the currency from my international orders, and I'm going to link that to the base currency of my FX rate, and then I want to grab grab that FX rate out. So this is actually creating something that we call a decorate trigger. So this decorate now is in real time calculating that for us. I hit next. These are all the values being uh, produced by that decorate, finished. So now we can see we've got our real time uh, order blotter here on the right hand side. I'm just going to go ahead and do a little bit of uh, column arrangement here just to make it a little easier for us to see what's going on. I'm going to grab my FX rate, uh, my transact time, and my symbol. I'm just going to move those all the way to the left here. So the next thing I want to do is I want to create a derived column. So I'm going to add a column to the right. Uh, basically, I want to choose my average price. That's coming from my international orders. And then I'm going to go ahead and multiply that using the multiply uh, operator. We have tons of different functions you just saw there. And then I'm going to go ahead and multiply that by my FX rate. Uh, I'm going to give this two digits of formatting. Uh, and I'm just going to call this uh, PX in USD. Right, so the whole idea is I'm taking all these currencies, or I'm sorry, all these orders that are in local currency, and I'm now converting them in USD. We can see that's flowing in real time. I'll go ahead and just sort this by transact time so you can see that. On the left-hand side, I'm going to go ahead and create a real-time uh, aggregation now. I'm also going to put this on orders. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit next here. Um, I could do a variety of types of aggregations. I'm going to, I'm going to do a heat map, though. On the top level, I'll, or, uh, I'll uh, group it by account, and then I'll just do a subgrouping uh, by symbol. I'll go ahead and make the size of the boxes based on the order quantity, and then I'll make the color based on the uh, average price. Go ahead and finish that. So now we've got that sitting there. Oh, I see we've got some tweets coming in. I'm going to go ahead now and create a relationship between these. So I'm going to click on this guy, add a relationship over to that. And the whole idea of this relationship now is really to be able to take 
the, what I click on from the heat map and then find the related information in my blotter. So I go ahead and create that relationship. I click on BMO and now you can see the BMO orders are coming up. I click on BABA, we can see the BABA orders coming up. I'm gonna maximize this just for this next step here. Um, so what I wanna do next is give us the ability to actually cancel these orders. I'm gonna do something what's called a panic button. So the idea of a panic button is it cancels all of those orders. So the first thing I wanna do before I cancel it is I wanna to prove to you guys that these are canceled. So I need to set up some conditional formatting. I'm gonna go ahead and choose the status. And if the status is in a canceled state, then I'm gonna go ahead and make the background color. Uh, let's see here, I'm gonna make that background color maroon. Otherwise, I'll just leave it as is. Go ahead and submit that. I'm gonna go ahead now and add a button at the top. And the idea of this button is um, it's gonna actually go ahead and um, it's gonna go ahead and cancel that. So let me just write this out here. Execute, update, orders, orders, set status equals canceled. There we go, put a semicolon at the end of that. Go ahead and submit that. Now I click the button. And now you can see it's canceled all those orders. Basically, it sent, it updated the database, marked them as canceled. Normally, I'd go to your, opera, or your OMS. Um, and then at that point, now you can see they're canceled. Um, and you can see new orders are flowing in, right? I didn't cancel the entire system. I just canceled those orders. If the operator went in and they clicked it again, it would cancel it again. One thing I forgot to do, I forgot to label this button panic. Let's go ahead and do that. There we go, panic, submit that. And then finally, just to show around the flexibility of this, um, I'm gonna go ahead and take this entire panel that we built here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that panel, minimize this, click here, um, add a tab to the right, and then go ahead and paste that in there. There we go. Uh, and now we can see it's basically moved to that inside there. Built that very quickly for you guys. So, so what you've just seen is a force multiplier that our platform provides to your engineers. I can say with conviction that this approach is proven and is the future of application development. The days of developers handwriting huge bodies of code, I believe are gonna come to an end. Just like databases opened up a new era of software design in the 80s, we are in the dawn of the platform era. And to clarify, I'm not saying 3Forge is alone in this future, but I look forward to 3Forge's chapter as a leader in that story. There is so much more I could show you. This is just a little bit of the demo. That's it, thank you.